You are listening to season three of the Not Neurotypical podcast. I'm your host, Laura Stan, and this season has a very new big plot twist. So hold on tight, strap on your seatbelts, because it's still going to be a bumpy ride. And is that bumpy ride ever going to get smoother? Season three of the Not Neurotypical podcast is proudly sponsored by Timo, the award-winning app designed to support neurodivergent people with routine and scheduling. Head to your app store and type T-I-I-M-O to learn more. Okay, so this one's a big one. Honestly, a truly big shift has happened and I haven't posted a podcast or really been posting on social media that much lately because basically I've been having a hard time and you know what that's okay it's okay do you guys know that do you know that it's okay that we're not perfect all the time because when you grew up like me where every little thing you did was pointed out as wrong or not appropriate or the wrong way to do this and the wrong way to do that and all of that and then continue to receive that regularly all throughout adulthood we get this idea in our head that we have to be perfect or that we have to have everything figured out or that everything we do matters And in some ways it does, but the truth is that it's okay to not be okay. I've said it before on this podcast, the mask that I'm okay and that I'm always okay, which I started doing as a child, that mask has been the most harmful mask personally to me. And that's because that mask robs you of learning self-accommodation and advocacy. It robs you of truly understanding who you are, who your limits are, or what your limits are, and how to properly set boundaries for those limits. It robs you of non-compliance which growing up in America is not celebrated and in a lot of other places as well. Uh, Compliance is so important to middle and upper class white people. It's so important. It's like the number one thing. This is the main reason ABA became a thing. And by the way, I will be posting more about ABA. I have... A lot of info I think you're going to hear, you are going to want to hear about it, but the truth is that it needs to be put out in the right way, in the right format, and properly. (laughs) So it's taken me a little time to put together, um, but I now have direct experience with ABA, and not that there's anything wrong with talking out against ABA when you have no formal experience with it. But I want all of you to understand. Oh, hi, Gigi. Come say hi to everybody. This is my youngest daughter, Gigi. She's three. Go ahead. Say hi into the microphone. Hi. Tell everybody what your favorite thing to do is. (laughs) My favorite thing to do is to walk. (laughs) To walk? Yes. Oh, what, what kind of places do you like to walk? The Navy Yard. Oh, the Navy Yard. In Philadelphia, we have a Navy Yard, and it's a really cool place. What else do you like to do besides walking around? Um, the waterfall, and we go with our crocs. Yes, yesterday was- we visited the mountains, which is only about a two-hour drive from Philadelphia, and we found this beautiful hiking trail and we were surprised to find a waterfall yes and it was magical wasn't it george yes it yes was magical. and luckily we brought crocs for you so you could actually play in the water jumping up and down in muddy puddles yes. you parents know what i'm saying there anyway 
that was my daughter, Gigi. She's my youngest. She's my baby. She's so special to me. And most of all, she is so much fun and so filled with life and also doesn't mask at all. This chick is so inspiring. Like, She does not care about anything. She is Gigi. No one's changing Gigi. But she's also super lovable and fun. And you just want to have a good time with her. And just not that stereotypical girl or even boy that you think of with autism. Or autistic, I should say. I'm still catching myself on all the language stuff. Uh, But anyway, where were we? Um, I was originally saying that not that having indirect experience with ABA means that you can't speak out and, you know, share your thoughts on it. But I thought you all would be very interested to hear about that. But anyway... There is so much that I want to share with you in this episode. I have been in a really bad place and it wasn't brought on by one thing specifically. And I think that's so common. The other thing is I always feel like I am in between breakthroughs. And in between those breakthroughs, I have no clue what is going on inside me, like what's happening, why am I feeling this, why am I feeling that. And a part of that is that in development, no one understood my specific challenges or how to work with them and how to cope with them. It was just do it. Just deal with it. This is how you're supposed to be. This is what life is like. This is how you have to be. And because of that, I received zero coping skills with literally anything and I mean it's not hard to imagine why the rate of pretty serious issues in autistic adults is so high like jobless um, self-harm suicide everything Uh, and I just feel like saying like no shit (laughs) The way that people are raised is pretty shocking. And the compliance thing, like, let's go back to that. Compliance is pretty much the number one important thing that kids learn in school. It is, this is how it is. This is how it's going to be. You deal with that. This is how jobs are. There's very few, I think some companies are coming around. But there's very few jobs that are like, we really appreciate your creativity and output. So do whatever you want. And as long as we're happy, we're good. (laughs) Uh, And this is for a lot of things. Human nature, naturally, of all neurotypes, takes advantage of that. Um, But it also comes from deep, dark history. Human history. And I'm not going to go too far into that. And if you have any sort of imagination or historical knowledge, it's probably not too far of a stretch for you to put that together. But I say this all the time. If you follow me on Instagram, (laughs) I hate saying that. I really hate Instagram. Am I allowed to say that? If you follow me on there, I'm really appreciative of it appreciative of it I cannot talk but like I said last episode well actually you know what (laughs) here's the thing I've probably recorded like five episodes that I haven't released within the past couple months and it's because I was just in that bad place and I'm so confused and um I don't know sometimes I just don't throw everything out there until I kind of understand it. I guess like I don't want to put it out there until I really understand it. But um, I 
recently recorded something and you might have heard it and you may not have. I don't even know. Uh, I recently recorded that Instagram is like pushing me towards burnout. Like social media in general. It's just like I feel close to a burnout. I feel better now than I did when I recorded that. And what helped me was distancing myself, truly. But over the course of the last couple months, I uncovered the most beautiful concept. And it's not a new concept by any means, but I am so passionate about it because I think it is so important. So, so, so important. And that is unlearning neurotypical. And what that means for me is basically we have been taught compliance. Not just taught, we've been forced compliance. Compliance has been necessary for safety, for one version of success in a lot of cases, not for every case, and for school and so many other things. And the kids who are non-compliant I want to point out, kids and people who are non-compliant are either outcasted from society or they change it. They change everything. Um, Compliance is not creative. It is not groundbreaking and it never will be. It is not any type of special or new or anything. It is telling everyone what their place is and people falling in line. And in general, that is just not who we are. And I think compliance is a really scary thing that we prioritize in our society. And, I mean, you can just look at different cultures that have different values than the white compliance narrative that is so important and the narrative has been that they're just like no good if the culture does not fit perfectly into that compliance it's that it's bad which is such a load of crap and it's so false and that right there is a huge logical fallacy that people just eat up like oh they're different so they must be bad (laughs) uh and with all of the talks going on now of looking at different things like like compliance and how it affects us how it affects people of different intersections within neurodiversity and everything it's so apparent that what we've been taught is not accurate what we've been taught to be, how to act, what we should do, how we need to be in every little situation is not right for our brains because we were taught neurotypical. And what do you do when what you've been taught is no longer useful to you? You unlearn it. And unlearning neurotypical, I personally believe, is going to completely change the landscape of late realization and honestly so many hurt people are hurt just because they've been forced into this neurotypical world and not given an outlet to properly create and be themselves and work or be the way that they need to be the way that looks happy and feels happy to them the way that it looks successful to them and feels success because success is not the same for everybody and people have a very different idea of that and I'm basically changing up all my content around unlearning right now because I really think this is groundbreaking for our community because how do we really grow how are we going to grow like when you realize that you 
have ADHD or you're autistic or whatever your type of neurotype that you figure out, like what are you supposed to do? The pain, the hurt, the trauma that we've endured is already there. It's already affecting us. We've already made changes to accommodate neurotypical. So what do we do to accommodate ourselves? We unlearn that bullshit. And while we all come from very different backgrounds and different lived experiences, there's really one fact that unites all of us, and that's that we live in a neurotypical world. The neurotypicals have decided what all of our experiences are going to be like and what they mean. And we are forced into that and we're just kind of stuck until we mindfully get ourselves out of that box. And right now, data shows that Basically, three out of four people are neurotypical in the world. I think it's higher. I think that the understanding of neurodivergence is rising and more and more people are getting diagnosed all the time. And I think it's more. I definitely do not think that it's even 50-50. But I do think it's close, personally. There's just way too many people out there with zero awareness of any of this stuff. I mean, before my son was diagnosed as autistic, I had no idea about any of this. So that that's my point is like you can be struggling and you can be different and you can know that your whole life and still never find this stuff. And that's why it's so sad and that's why we need to talk about it and that's why people need to know that they're okay that them struggling under ridiculous benchmarks that have been set for them personally that do not match who they are doesn't mean that they're defective or bad or anything like that. And they just haven't heard that yet. They don't even know. And that's exactly why all of us to grow really need to unlearn all of the false truths that we were taught. And unlearning neurotypical gives us that fresh start. It helps us begin to nurture our inner child. The inner child that was so misunderstood. It gives us the chance to better ourselves through loving ourselves or at least learning to and giving ourselves the understanding and acceptance that we always needed and make no mistake that love, understanding, and acceptance is what we deserved. And some of us didn't get that. And some of us did. I don't want to leave you guys out. And chances are if you went to public school or have had any type of job, you've still experienced all of these things. Even if you had a lot of acceptance and support in your home, it's something that I feel like we all experience at some point. Some of us just unfortunately grew up in very ableist households as well and made it a lot harder. But as I've learned on my own journey through all of this and with all of the misinformation out there, it seems that the more that I've learned, the more I need to unlearn. Like I just feel like it's going to be really hard. But I also believe that the hard things that we do are the most important and are the things that we need to do the most. The easy things, they're not special. They're really not. They don't change our lives. They don't make us look at the world differently. The easy things maybe give us comfort for a minute, (laughs) a day. This one's going to be hard, but I just feel like it's going to be the most rewarding thing or journey I've ever been on. But where does it end? I don't know. I started new Patreon content all around unlearning 
and I'm so p passionate about it and I've gotten really good responses from my patrons so far. And if you're into it, visit patreon.com slash unlearning neurotypical. You can sign up for as little as $3 a month and see all of the unlearning content. And obviously your support means so much to me. So if you would go take a look at that, patreon.com slash unlearning neurotypical, I would really appreciate it. But where does it end? I don't know. I am currently reevaluating everything. Like, where does unlearning start for my children? Like, they've already learned some things that are not good, honestly. I mean, my son's 10. He's learned a lot of stuff. He just got diagnosed when he was almost nine. And he learned a lot of stuff that he already needs to unlearn. And me and him are doing that together. But where does it end? Like, what kind of journey? Like, it's exciting. Like, what kind of journey is this putting me on? And are you going to follow? Because I feel like we all need this. I hope you will. Uh, I am questioning making a whole YouTube channel about this. Maybe like family and learning. Like you've heard of unschooling. It's, the, it's a specific style of homeschooling. And it's basically saying like the school system totally sucks. And this is not how you truly educate. And I have to agree. I think there's benefits to school and I've been through school and also personally know all of the harms that that environment can also do to people who are quote unquote different. And, you know, it's just like that, like, where is this going to end? Is this going to change my view of everything? It already kind of has. It's exciting. But just go to, go to the Patreon, take a look at it. Um, I'm going to be releasing more about this because it's so exciting. And you're probably like, what the heck is she talking about? Um, but I, it's truly like what it sounds like. Like we have to unlearn all of the negatives that we've been dealing with to truly grow and relearn the positives to get our self-esteems back, to take the mask off to be okay in our skin. Because I'm not perfect. And I am so sick of struggling. And I finally feel like I kind of have a piece of this giant puzzle of how I'm going to like put my life together. So my question to you is, are you game? We'll see.